Hey y'all, Petrina here with Homegrown Florida and we are getting into it today y'all. We are getting it done and that is getting ready for the fall garden. So these four beds behind me, we are going to completely tear these out. I'm going to also show you how I deal with my chop and drop sun hemp here. And we're also going to be amending the beds because I do have some fertilizer issues in some of these beds and I don't want to have to use as much fertilizer. So we are going to amend. And if we have time and the sun is not too bad today, I'm going to show you how I create my own mulch and we're going to lay that down over all of the beds. Believe it or not, this first two beds right here that is 16 feet long all has a Puerto Rican black bean plant that has gotten really crazy and I do believe this is maybe one or two plants. It's insane. Before we get started, we got to get prepped and that means getting the hair up. And I also want to get my sleeves on because these beds, these four beds right here have been inundated with bugs all over the place and it's pretty bad. And as much as I love nature and I'm all about the garden, I don't really like bugs jumping on me. So I got these sleeves, they're farmer's defense, and uh, they have helped with the mosquitoes this summer. Other than that, I haven't really used them and I thought, you know what, this is going to be the perfect opportunity to use them because I don't want the bugs to be touching me. This is a great way to keep them off my skin and keep me from screaming on camera. <laughs> I'm also going to put my gloves on uh, because once again, there's just a significant amount of bugs and I, I'm just not a fan. So I think I found the first plant right here. So I'm just snipping it. Oh, there looks like there's two right here. And I'm just snipping it at the base. And that should be, yep, that's it. All right, so we got that whole bed cleaned out, or two beds cleaned out. I knew it was just one plant and I was correct. It is. It was technically two plants, but they were right next to each other from uh, a volunteer. So some had dropped into the bed before. I do have a bunch of beans still on this plant right here. And so this guy is going into the compost pile, um, but I wanna see if I can retrieve as many beans as possible. Last year, what I did was I actually took this giant heap right here and I just threw it back on the beds uh, for my potatoes. And it did work well, but it takes so long to break down that way and it kind of gets in the way. So I wanted to avoid that. So this is actually just going to go straight into the compost tumblers versus uh, me just letting it compost in place. But it's going to be a different story for this sun hemp back here. So let me get the beans off this plant as much as I can to save. And then uh, this guy's going to go in the gorilla cart and he's going to hold all of our compost material that will eventually go into the bins. I do have a lot of weeds that were growing, which is surprising because it was covered pretty well. They did have some weeds. Those are not going into the compost bins. Those can either go into a burn pile or go out with your regular trash. You don't really want those in the bins because some of them, uh, some of them reproduce based on seeds and some of them actually reproduce uh, by their roots. And so that's what I'm trying to get rid of are the ones that reproduce by roots. And if you're not sure which is which, no worries, just toss them all. Okay, so went through all of the bean plants and got all the beans off of them. I got them in my bucket right here. There wasn't that many, but there was some, which is cool. That's just extra. Those are gonna end up being my seeds for my Puerto Rican black beans next year. Last year I had a bumper crop, so I had no need to grow them. So they still wanted to come up. So I'm going to go ahead and save the seeds from these guys because they'll be the freshest. I probably still could have used the seeds from last year, but fresher seeds are better. Now that we have that all done, and I'm just going to have to figure out how to get all that in my compost bin, that's okay. That's for later. 
The next thing that we're going to work on is this sun hemp. Sun hemp is a cover crop. It does bloom and can produce seeds, but mainly down in like super south Florida. So it's not going to happen here for me in central Florida. There's no point in me trying to save anything from it, but I am going to use it as one of my mulches today. Um, the sun hemp is a great mulch to use because it does have a high nitrogen fixing element to it. Um, I'm going to cut it down at the base, but before I do that, I'm going to take my hedge trimmers and I am going to trim it off one foot at a time and kind of push it to the other side so that it falls straight to the ground and then I can break it up and I can put it in my beds that need more nitrogen. When we get closer to the bottom, that's when I'm going to get out my hand tools because my, my electric trimmers are not going to do that well. And I'm going to have to cut each one of these plants off at the base, leaving the roots down into the beds. Now, if you don't have electric hedge trimmers, it's no big deal. There are um, manual ones. I don't own any. All I have are loppers, which have like a small head. Let me grab. I have these guys, but that head is really small. And I mainly use these for cutting um, the stems of very, very big plants like uh, broccolis and cauliflowers. But a hedge trimmer that's similar to this is going to have a super long straight blade, probably about that long, and you snap, snap, snap. And you could cut it down that way if you don't have the electric hedge trimmers. So I'm going to get that out and we're going to start shaving this down. So now that we've cut them all down, we are left with these little, these little stubs that are sticking out of the ground. And what you want to do is try to cut them at the base of the ground to leave the roots down in the bottom, but take the tops off to keep them from continuing to grow. So we're just going to, <laughs> they're pretty stiff, look at that, pretty thick. There we go. And um, you can leave those right in the beds. It's no big deal. Um, that's actually what chop and drop means is to literally cut it and drop it right in place like that. And I kind of did a line with all of these. So you can see I got that first line right there. And so here's a much thicker, thicker line. Let's get some of these. Now we just need to do that to all of the rest of the bed. We need to go through and trim up everything. Okay, we got it completely cut down. There are no more little stumps and this bed I'm going to call it done. I do need to rake up all of the, the tops of the sun hemp because I am going to use that in mulch in another bed. I think this one is covered pretty good so I don't think it needs anything extra so we're going to save this for other beds.
All right, friends, we got the, you know, sun hemp mulch all ready to go. It's in a pile over there. I'm waiting to use it until I know exactly which one of the beds I want to put it in. I have a chart of what I'm growing where, and that will go into the bed that needs the most nitrogen. So I'm just kind of holding off at the moment. Now this is the part of the day that I have been dreading. It's this guy back here. I let this get away from me, like very, very much so. And I planted way too much stuff. Okay, so there is one loofah plant, which are all these leads right here. There's a ton of them that loofah took over the entire trellis. I did not expect one loofah to do that. It does, and it was growing into the other bed as well and kind of grew through the sun hemp. Uh, anyway, so it also has Thai soldier beans, cow peas, butterfly peas, and there might be another kind of squash in there. We are going to get these tore down. Now I do have a couple loofahs that are not dried yet, but I really need this bed for my fall garden. So I'm going to cut them off green and we're going to see if I can do anything with them. Uh, I know they're not edible at their stage. They're way too big. So, uh, we're just going to play that one by ear. I'll keep you updated on that. But for now, the thing that we're going to try to do is get all these vines off this trellis, which is going to be pretty difficult. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a task. I've done this before. I got my, my sleeves back on because I have seen the amount of bugs that are in here. They've jumped on me just walking by. There might, might be a snake in there. Yeah, there was a skin. I found a skin. <laughs> So uh, a shed, like you know how uh, snakes shed their skin. I found one of those the other day and so I'm fairly certain that that guy might still be in there. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to actually find the base of the plants at the bottom here and I'm going to cut them at the base and then I've done this before. I did a whole video once on how I clean up a trellis. It's not the easiest thing but basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it one foot at a time cut it one foot at a time until I get both sides done and then the top I'll have to get a little ladder and um, do the same thing like a foot at a time and pull it all up. Wish me luck. guys gotten that much done but I'm a little bit concerned with getting up in it a ladder at this point because I don't want to get too close but somewhere in this vicinity right here I hear something moving every time I tug 
or you know cut something or move i i feel something move up there i'm i'm feeling like it's a snake it could be a luber grasshopper because they're really big down here i just heard it <laughs> oh so i'm a little nervous about getting up on a ladder and kind of getting up there with my body and everything and then like falling off the ladder because <laughs> some snake pops out so i think what i'm going to do is i'm I've been careful so far because I don't want to damage my trellis and I also want to collect as many beans as possible but at this point I really don't want to get bit by a snake so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of grab this and like pull as hard as I can and see if I can shift everything this way if it's a snake up there hopefully he gets the clue that like he needs to leave and then I'll give him a few minutes and he can take off hopefully I'll get that on camera but if not whatever it is I hope it kind of persuades it to move on. I keep hearing it. It's freaking me out. <laughs> okay. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, as my husband would say. Let's do it. All right, so I took a little break. We had a pretty extreme freak storm just kind of happen and it blew a ton of stuff everywhere. Now all the beans are wet. We're gonna get this done. I need to get this done. This has taken the longest. Hopefully the rain and all that wind and all the movement that I've been doing scared whatever it was that's in there out. And you know, it's actually with that rain and stuff, I can actually see through it better because the plant is like falling down. So I don't really see anything anymore. See underneath there, I don't see anything. So. So it looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loofahs. So I'm gonna put these on my table in my patio and I'm gonna let them dry out a little bit before I start trying to process these into sponges. <laughs> So we got 95% of it off. There is still a little bit kind of left at the top. I made sure that I cut all the roots so none of it is gonna to continue to grow. But it's really hard to get off the vines when they're green like this. I'm actually gonna wait until it starts to die and become brittle and brown because at that point, then you can just actually pull and it will just rip right off. So the top of this is gonna look messy, messy for a little while, but that's okay. It's easier. It continues to rain off and on, so I don't think I have much more time to be able to do this, but I wanna get these amendments down. Uh, right here, I have, and it, sorry, it's upside down. This is called Nutri-Rich 432, nice little balanced fertilizer. I got that from Azure Standard. It is a, basically the ingredients are granulated chicken manure. So it's aged chicken manure. And so this is a good one if you just want a little bit of nitrogen, and I'm gonna explain that in a minute. And then I have some bone meal here. This guy is 412-0, so lots of phosphorus. That's what we need, I gotta finish up this bag. And then we have some kelp meal, that's a 102. This is good for potassium. And then we have blood meal, which is 1200. This is really good for nitrogen. 
So this bed where the sun hemp was, that's going to be broccoli, cauliflower, kale, lots of green. So we're going to add some extra nitrogen to this, even though I think that the sun hemp probably gave it what it needs. I'm just going to add a little bit more. But then over here, we're going to have potatoes and onions. So this is going to need a little, little nitrogen, little potassium, little phosphorus. So basically a nice even blend. Over here, I'm going to have some tomatillos, some carrots. Once again, that's probably going to follow this same method here. And then over here, this section, probably didn't need anything because I'm going to put some snap peas uh, or shelling peas. And then over here is going to be a bunch of squashes and probably a few other things that I can think of. But as you can tell, this doesn't need that much nitrogen and the squashes don't need that much nitrogen. Now, I have measured out uh, the granulated chicken manure from Azure, as well as the bone meal, blood meal, and kelp meal. And this cup is like a perfect size for each one of my beds. <laughs> it's just a raised cup, so, um, but it, it happens to hold the exact amount of weight. So that's the thing to think about when you're doing fertilizers. It's based on weight in the square footage of your bed. So I weighed this cup with the ingredients in it, and that gives me exactly what I need. Next up, we're doing the bone meal. Once again, the same three beds. We're gonna do kelp meal right after that. And then last but not least, we're gonna do one cup of blood meal for that first bed that hasn't gotten anything so far. Now it's, it's pretty wet, so I don't really think I even need to do this part, which is to rake it in, but it's good practice to kind of just dig it into the ground a little bit. Just so the wind doesn't take it away. And I usually use my other rake. <laughs> this is the one that's out right now. So. Normally what I would do next is to put mulch on this, but it keeps raining. And my idea for the mulch was to chip up a bunch of trees. I have a bunch of branches in my shed and out in front that have fallen from my big camper tree. But with all the rain, it is going to be a nightmare to try to chip those up uh, while it's wet. So I need to wait for it to dry. I don't know if that's gonna be today it's not gonna be today. Uh, maybe tomorrow might give it enough time to dry out. Worst case, it's gonna be in a few days. It's okay to leave it for a couple days if that's all you can do. I don't have any other mulch that I can put down. It does have a thin layer of grass clippings that I've been putting on it. Um, and we didn't disturb the roots. All we did was rake it in a little bit, the amendments. So 
I think that's gonna be what we call good for today. And in another video, I'll show you exactly how I chip up my branches. I do have a previous video for free mulch, um, which I show you my Sunjo chipper. So check that out if you're interested. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm gonna still need to rake all this up and I'm still gonna need to put that sun hemp in a bed. And I think I'm going to put it down in one of these beds. There's still a couple more that I need to clear, but that's it for today. I hope you guys had fun today. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. I definitely enjoyed hanging out with you. If you wanna watch a couple more of my videos, I'm gonna put them up now, including, um, planting our fall seeds which you really need to get started at right now if you haven't already happy gardening guys